Oh yo yo, welcome back to <laughs> Today we are doing lots of much needed work to the Mustang We are trying to get her on track as soon as possible <laughs> We have an event coming up on the 1st of June and then there's another event later the next month we don't know if we're gonna make it to that first event, but we have to make it to that second event. We need to get some more seat time in. I need it! So today, follow along. I'll show you what we're getting done. Okay, so real quick, I'm going to pull up the Salt Lake City Drift uh, tech requirements and just quickly go through what exactly the Mustang needs to pass currently. Uh, what's not legal and a couple of the things that I've already done. I'll go through with you guys Okay, so right here. I have it pulled up on my tablet. All right So I here have the Salt Lake City drift events tech information for 2024 Just real quickly going over this stuff firstly It tells you to secure a pit area once you get there prepare the vehicle to be teched Tells you you need a Snell SA 2010 and newer helmet, no dirt bike helmets. Um, other than that, just says to be respectful of the property, be respectful of the pit area. Along with if you break down to assume the track is always hot, do not get out of your vehicle unless there is a fire. Okay, so those are basic rules. And here is the vehicle requirements. So first thing it says is bash bars. We're not gonna worry about that, but there is that information if you need it. I do have stock bash bars, so we are good there. Chassis, there's no loose items, inside or out. For exterior, you must have structural rigidity. They recommend running all your body panels. Seats must be stable and secure, properly mounted. Um, harnesses and seat belts i have stock seat belts right now one of them's a little finicky i'll show you that so i might need to get a different seat belt but um there's that information there fire extinguishers are required and down here it does specify that it must be in reach of the driver so we are going to be double checking that for myself i do have a fire extinguisher but we're gonna have to verify that i can reach it at all times Lastly, it is also saying about roll cages. For this event, roll cages are not required, and that is a big reason why I'm going, because roll cages are quite pricey. So time to get some tandem practice in without getting a roll cage right away. So there's for your chassis. Next, it will go over batteries. Batteries, you must have battery tie-down. Factory or aftermarket battery tie-downs must be in place and functional wherever your battery is placed. So must be a functional battery tie down. Um, your positive battery terminal must be covered along with wiring must be clear of foot and hand controls, tail lights, brake lights, all your lights should work, especially for tandems. Okay, third, this is a big one for us. We're gonna be going over a ton of our leaks. It's already leaking. Um, engine, your car must be free of all excessive fluid leaks, radiator, engine oil, trans, diff, power steering, brakes. Um, it does talk about BMWs and S chassis, having brake fluid reservoirs getting hot. Um, talking about putting sock on it for heat prevention. Uh, coolant, coolant is no longer allowed. Please use water and water additives. Water wetter is a good one. So we're actually going to be doing that today, adding water wetter and draining the coolant from the cooling system. Lastly, it goes over suspension. You can't have any loose suspension, excessive play in your ball joints, steering along with your brakes must be firm with low fade. Brake shoes, pads, rotors must perform as intended uh, with minimal wear and no damage. And then lastly, it is saying lug nuts, all lug nuts must be place, in place and tight. Please be sure you are running the appropriate lug for your wheel and stud. So, must have all your lug nuts and that is all their requirements so not a whole lot luckily we do have most of this they have a little video here on their website if you guys want to check them out and that is it for the website so 
Let's go ahead and get out there and see what we gotta freaking do to this freaking Mustang. <laughs> okay, so right here is what we're gonna be focusing on today. We have a cooling system, fixing a coolant leak, power steering leak, and tow hooks. The last thing I forgot to mention on the chassis part of things is the tow hooks. You have to have functional tow hooks. I do currently have a tow hook on the back, but it's a bit of a cheaper one. We're going to upgrade to these blocks ones that should support the car a lot better. All right, that being said, let's get the hood popped. As you can see, I already have the car on jacks, the pan underneath it, and we are ready to drain the cooling system. I did already install the front tow strap. Um, that was just at a later time, and I didn't have a chance to film it, but I will be able to show you guys the rear. Um, but that being said, let's get right into it. Okay, I'm gonna need you to take a deep breath in and bend over. A little looky loo, yeah, that's uh, all. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, <laughs> That sucks. I hope that you guys caught that. My little thing just completely snapped. That freaking sucks. Plastic, cheapo, radiator. That's what I get. But hey, she keeps it cold. Found an eight mil. The noose. You can just like slowly do it. Like real slow. Just give her. Nice hand job. Slightly milk her like that. Oh yeah. Nice. Oh yeah. Hold on. Nice and easy, only a little bit of cooling in my mouth. That's what she said. <laughs> While we let that drain, we're just gonna chat about the reason I have this part right now. So, I will zoom in here in just one second, but over time, the past year and a half since I had regasketed this, it has started to leak again. Um, I had a tremendous difficulty getting this gasket to seal last time. It took me like three tries. I don't know if it's because I was young and messed up housing, aka why I just ended up getting a housing. Yeah, or also you just don't have good accessibility to good gaskets other than you know paper gaskets or making your own gasket so this gasket is actually an o-ring that edelbrock uh, offers so a new housing new gasket i think this will be a much better solution to get it to seal first try and it's black it looks cool well it's what's not to like about it and it was cheap the gasket that was like rubber material was like $33, while this whole thing was roughly $20. So, much better option, highly recommend it. My only worry is that the bolts are gonna work or not, unless, oh no, it looks like it comes with hardware. Look at that, new hardware as well. That is a beautiful piece. So, while that is draining, we will pop this hose off as well. Take that off and uh, clean up down there. I'll real quickly zoom in to what you can kind of see from it just sitting. So, over time, it's just drip, 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 drip. And it puddles up like right there too. So, yeah, just a little seeping leak from her. Oh, 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 there goes my radiator cap. I'm a little nervous to pop this off because that really hasn't drained very much. I mean, yeah, it drained all of it, but I'm pretty sure it's still dripping, so. Oh, and here comes rain. Well, as you can see, it's coming down a lot harder now. But, you know what? That ain't stopping us. That ain't stopping us. We're getting this done. We gotta go to the trap. We gotta get the fucking trap. Eat it! We got prep to do, dog. We got prep to do. Alright, we 
gotta zoom back in just in case this leaks everywhere. G plus probably Amazon hoses that I got when I was 16. Trick I use to so get in there and get it to just kind of twist. Maybe you just pull it right off. And you know if the shoe rips that easy, you need a new hose anyways. Oh yeah. Well she didn't even leak anything out. So oh, a loose 13. Alright, we'll see how sketchy it is. You know what? I have tools for this. Oh, yeah. I wish you didn't need that much. Oh, it's because it's in there. Nice. Now I gotta clean off whatever the fuck I did to get this thing to seal. That's lovely. Okay, it's coming down a lot harder now, so in that case, as you can hear, I'm going to go inside. Alright, now that the weather is clearing up a bit, we're going to hop back on this thermostat housing. Lovely o ring. This is the big reason I wanted to get the kit. I got a machined spacing for it. Awesome. I'm showing you right. That little tab right there is actually like a little air thing. So you want that one facing up. As far as I know. Just as far as I know. So if this is going to be chilling like that, we're going to place her in there like this. Work the spec. Torque the spec. Now I'm pretty confident with that. Oh, now before we run back to the parts store, let's move on to our power steering pump. This here power steering pump, it's a new pump when I did the motor. And, uh, I believe this little seal guy right here likes to leak you a little bit. Just a little bit, not a whole lot. And then I'm not, I don't fully remember exactly how this connects. There's something back there, but I think she leaks a little bit from back there too. And then the dead given, my freaking cap. I don't think that's gonna pass tech, so. Got ourselves a new cap. We can uh, just get rid of that. And how are we looking on fluid? Oh, we got nothing in there. <laughs> so you are leaking. Well, let's go ahead and swap those seals out. I definitely say our seals chewed up. And it should seal. If it don't with that, then I'm assuming it's the line. I'll replace the line. But hopefully it seals it enough for you to it. Hopefully it just fixes it. It's gonna fix it. If not, I have to replace the line. It is what it is. Now it gives you two sizes, but it's just one size that actually fits. It's just extremely hard to get on there. Oh my gosh, it snapped. It freaking snapped. Jeez. All right, they got my ass. I walked in there and I was like, all right, you know, this would also be good to do in the video. I will show you guys here right now. I have just a pin-sized leak in my oil pan. Like I hit something with my oil pan 
and popped a hole in it. I tried to fix it with JV Weld already, but there was fluid in it and it worked for like a second and then it just started leaking again. So we're actually gonna drain the oil as well, do a nice oil change, filter, and then we're gonna try to fix that little hole on the oil pan again. Don't mind this, this is for my girlfriend's car. And then they actually warranted out that part that broke on us. So we're gonna try that round two, see if we can get that on there without breaking. And then unfortunately that location did not have the hose that I need. So we will be running to another location here shortly to grab that hose. So we can finish up the cooling system. Okay guys, so I found out with this, you can actually just kind of stretch it with a little bit of hot water. So that is what we're gonna do. Put it on here and just slowly work her on. It'll be good to throw that on there and see if it fixed our leak. Okay, we're gonna let that seal just kind of expand back to what it was, and then, or I guess you should say shrink back to what it was, and then I will be right back with the coolant line that we need. All right, finally, after going to the parts store for like freaking the fifth time today, I have the hose I need. I believe I have everything I need. I even went to Home Depot and got myself a bucket to put the fluid in. Yeah, because then I can drain it at my work. Yeah. Okay. It is sprinkling. I'm going to take a little break and then we're going to get back out here if it's raining or not. Get these hoes done. And then... Yeah, we'll do our little oil thing, get you guys caught up on that. Now, as you can see, it's bright and sunny, nice and warm out. So, let's get back to this, get this hose swapped out, get the power steering fixed, and then we'll move on to the oil. Let's thread her on in. And in this very moment, I just realized I didn't get any more power steering fluid. I gotta go back to the parts store for the seventh time today. That's awesome. That is awesome. See, the thing is, I feel like that hose should not be loose like that. Back to loose. Always enjoy a loose hose. Dude, he's hey. Boom. <clears throat> so, the reason I'm Placing it as you can see it's actually expanded a good amount right there. It feels Nowhere near the durability of it. It looks like it's been kind of chewed up a bit on the end I don't know if that was Me cutting it or something It does appear to be a little bit shorter. So that looks like a fix that was done in the past and we are now going to be fully replacing it now, so Let's do it. Look at that. <clears throat> Chewed right through it. That sucks. You know what that means. Another part store run. Another one. Okay. Last of it. The eight O'Reilly's run or however many I've done. Power steering. Obviously type half. Delicious for for Mustang. And we got some more hose pumps. Heck to the yeah. Let's do this. And obviously, I brought the kids out. Huh, say hi, Cooper. Say hi to the people, Cooper. Say hi. Say hi to the people, Cooper. Yeah, yeah, you're a good boy. And Mr. Leo, man. Leo. Oh, oh yeah. Kids are out and about. You guys stay safe right here. Guy does his stuff right here. Gotta get in there with your fingers first. You gotta let them know it's about to go down. You can't just start cranking on it, you know? You gotta, mm, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Feel the resistance on that. Ooh! There you go. That's tight. On the other connection, it should still be good. Cool. Now, we can actually connect the lower radiator hose. And we will be all set to add water. Tighten this up and then run water through it. Make sure there's no leaks. 
and then I can drain the water and that should really get all the coolant out because you can only do so much just by draining it like this and not having a way to flush it. You know what? Scratch that. We're taking this off and I'm fucking hosing water through it. One second. Okay. Fill this up with some distilled water. Solid. So, we now have all the hoses tightened for the cooling system. The thermostat housing has been replaced with a new gasket, and we are now going to cross our fingers as we add water that it all seals nicely. No coil leaks, no water system. So let's real quickly grab the water wetter and the water, distilled water, and uh, get to chugging. So directions for use, that's what we need. Okay. So we're just gonna throw this whole freaking bottle in there. Remove my fancy fancy coolant overflow. Works beautifully. Let's drain this out. See if we can find a different one. I got a couple water bottles now that we're running water. <laughs> there we go. Okay, no funnel, ready? Beautiful. Beautiful. Ooh, I've been excited for this, Johnny. So excited! Oh. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Oh. Full. Hot. Okay, so it gives you some range and everything. Look at that. And a little seal up top. Oh. Oh, oh yeah, oh yeah. Nice. Oh shit. Wow, look at that. He's a real boy. Garbage. Water is full. Power steering is full. We can start this, Johnny. Oh, and the tie down. I have previously gotten it tied down and ready to go, so. Battery tie downs already set. Battery terminal covers are already set, so we are good to go in that aspect. Now let's go ahead and fire it up and make sure we got no leaks. Currently bleeding itself out. See the bubbles going. 
bug. <laughs> you see the bubbles bubbling? Um, the thermostat still has not opened up yet. The fan will kick on when the thermostat opens up. But from my gauge that I'll show you guys in there, uh, we're right about 170, so the thermostat's just about to kick on. Oh, as I said that, the fans are now on. I mean, the thermostat is now open. about when we'd have a leak if we're gonna have a leak. It's chugging too, so. And the fan already turned back off. It's cooling itself down, it's working good. Real quickly, I did notice that the actual highest point of the radiator is shorter than the highest point of the hose now. So in order to properly bleed it, I'm gonna put this, I actually cut the bottom of the water wetter and uh, I'm using it as a little funnel thing so wish me luck let's get it to bleed yo 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 it's your boy okay so i just threw the radiator cap on with the uh extension i had i got all the bubbles out of the system wasn't bubbling anymore got the cap on there i've uh, been inspecting all of the places we touched and just overall the entire cooling system and i have not seen any more leaks so i'm going to call that a success we're going to check that off our board for the cooling system. And we also now know we fixed part of the power steering as the cap is brand new. And we now know that this power steering line is going to have to be replaced. So I will get that on order. We will get that swapped out as soon as possible. And we know that will be fixed. Um, next, real quick, I just wanted to show you guys something cool about the cooling system. I did this one, well, I did this before I rebuilt the motor and it kind of was having bad cooling issues. I just think there's so much gunk in the system and then when I got the block uh, bored over a little bit, they cleaned that out for me and I haven't had a cooling system issue. A cooling issue since. T -t 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 Today, Junior! Uh, but before that, I did install one of these little uh, aftermarket cooling system gauges. I'll show you the gauge right here. Let me flip the camera. I got one of these cheap gauges from like O'Reilly's or something. I haven't hooked up the amperage, or that's the oil pressure. I haven't hooked up the oil pressure or the amperage, but the coolant I have on, just so I get a actual real life reading, because the one up here is just a potentiometer, and uh, those can be a little bit scary to read off of. So, right down there, that little block I have, you can see I have like a sensor going into it. That's an aftermarket coolant sensor. That line just runs all the way up and through to that gauge right there. It gives me an active temp reading. You know I gotta give her a couple reps for a couple revs for you guys. system is now all set and ready to go. I'm probably going to have to flush it one more time because it was still pretty green from the old coolant. So most likely I'm going to come out, drain that lower hose again, and then top it off with water and do the bleeding system one more time. But we have checked our coolant leak off. We are no longer leaking any more coolant. And for our power steering system, we fixed our cap and now know that our line is back and we're going to get a new line back. 
now moving on and going to the oil pan. I will briefly show you guys where it's leaking at now that it's hot, and then we're going to give it a little while to cool down so we can drain the oil after that and try to fix that. Quickly as it comes, it goes. About to start raining again. Just heard some thunder, and the kiddos don't really like thunder, so you guys are gonna go back inside. Say bye to everybody. Say bye. Shake my hand for them. Here, shake my hand. Pa, pa. Yeah, good boy. Good boy. All right. Say bye to the people, Dio. Say bye to the people. Bye. Bye. Oh, I just ripped ass. Whoops. Sorry, guys. <laughs> okay, real quickly. Oh. I'm gonna grab my new bucket. Look, I got my new bucket. It's pretty sick. Yeah, it's got hazards and it's got one of these little spinners on top. Oh, 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 She's not even leaking from the plug. She leaks from right here. And it's probably pretty hard to see. Yeah. I have a pinhole size leak. A pin, pinhole size hole in my oil pan. And she just seeps from there. As you can see, I've put the JB weld on there already once and it did not work, but I also had oil in the pan still, so we're thinking if I drain it, then, you know, maybe it'll seal a little bit better. So here in a little bit, once it cools down, I'll drain her, swap a new filter on, and then we'll JB weld her up. And uh, hopefully that solves our issue for that. I really don't wanna have to buy a whole new pan, but just have to so wish me luck right. I'm not gonna lie it's dark outside now I'm not changing the oil yet we're holding it off we're doing a part two part two of getting the Mustang ready to hit the track not sure if that's gonna be the title but um, there's definitely a lot more to do I need to show you guys how to do the tow hook the tow strap and then I'm also going to be fixing that oil leak. We'll also see in part two if I can swap out that power steering line, just to verify that it's completely off our list. And I have one more thing to show you guys as far as window and a little bit more tech requirement with our fire extinguisher and the interior of our cockpit. So that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this portion of the video, I'm trying to bang out more content for you guys. I really do enjoy filming and doing this little stuff, even if it gets little amounts of views. Either way, please share, like, subscribe, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Deuces.